as I believe, as citizens of this democracy, whether we're on the left or on the right of this conversation, we have a responsibility to something larger than ourselves. We have a responsibility to reestablish the ability to listen to each other, to respect each other's humanity, even as we disagree with each other's points of view. We have a responsibility to understand and fully embrace our own points of view, but remember that they're points of view and not absolute truth. And so there are some things that we can do about this. You know, one is, it starts with recognizing your own biases and origins. To recognize that we don't come into these conversations clean. We come with an already conversation about the way it is. And we look to, and coming from that mindset, we look to gather information that supports our point of view. And as John Kenneth Galbraith, the great economist, once said, most human beings given a strongly held point of view and evidence to the contrary will quickly go about refuting the evidence. Right? So how can we make sure that we understand our own biases and include that in our thinking? The second is to really seek to understand the other's point of view. That doesn't mean necessarily agree with it. It doesn't mean you have to back off on your point of view, but to really understand especially why they think the way they do. The third is to increase your skills and comfort level with others, to learn to engage, to have courageous conversations, and to do it in appropriate ways. And I'm going to leave you with the tool in just a second to do that. The fourth is to take responsibility for this world we're living in and not just choose to, to, uh, to forward your own winning, but rather to look at ways that we can actually build bridges. And it's possible. I tell you, I've been doing it. One of the things I did for this book, because I, I've come from more from the liberal side, I went out and I interviewed over 100 people who voted for President Trump. And it completely exploded all of my stereotypes completely exploded all my stereotypes. You know? And when I tell that to people, a lot of people who are on my side of the political say, I can't believe you're spending the time talking to people like that. You know, so there's plenty of this on both sides of the equation that we have to pay attention to. The, the, th the fifth is to be willing to engage and to be vulnerable, to share with people what is it that concerns you about what I'm talking about? Why does this scare you? And then lastly, to resist the temptation for perfection and look for benefits of progress, how we're moving, because we're getting so perfectionistic that if people don't hit the litmus test of every point, they're not one of us, which causes even more polarization, because in order to be on either side, you have to be ideologically pure. Ideological purity is dangerous. There's, no, I, there's nothing more dangerous than an idea when it's the only one you have. So I want to leave you with a quick tool that you could use, and I'd even encourage you to try it today. It comes from a woman named Elizabeth Lesser. She called it take the other to lunch. So it starts when you actually find somebody who disagrees with you about something and tell them you'd like to have a conversation with them, not to persuade, not to defend or interrupt, but to be curious and authentic and listen, to really try to understand each other. That's the point of the conversation, not debate to try to convince anybody, but just to really get yourself in their head and figure out where they're coming from. And then you very simply ask four questions. The first is, what in your life experience has led you to believe what you do? Now, this is incredibly important because you begin to see, wow, if I grew up in that person's narrative, I might see the world just like they did. That's very different than there's evil over there and good over here or right over here and wrong over there. When we begin to understand that it's our narrative that gives us the world we see. The second is, what about this issue deeply concerns or frightens you? Because fear is at the heart of most human interaction and especially at the heart of most human reaction. And if we can get to what frightens people, then often, when both of us are talking about what scares us, then we can, we can negotiate because we're underneath the point of view looking at the cause of the point of view. It's very difficult to negotiate just the point of view without looking at the cause. My wife wants to keep the window open at night. I want to keep it closed. We argue back and forth about it until she says, look, I like fresh air, and I say I'm cold and it's noisy, so I get an electric blanket with half the, blanket can be, half the bed can be heated, and I get earplugs, and she can keep the window open because we looked at cause, you know, why we wanted those points of view. The third is, what have you always wanted to ask someone from the other side? I was doing one of these once, there was a straight and a gay guy, they were talking about this, and the straight guy says to the gay guy, when did you decide to be straight, to be gay? The gay guy looks back at him and says, I don't know, when did you decide to be straight? And the guy's jaw kind of fell. Right? And then finally, is there anything you'd like to say to clean up the past? Because we often, we often find ourselves in circumstances where something changes, but rather than going back and saying, hey, I'm sorry I did that, we kind of drag it with us into the future. But to go and say, you know what, I was wrong, I apologize, here's what you can count on me for the future. 
And it's our responsibility. So I want to end with this one little story by a guy named Lauren Isley. The story goes that Isley was walking down the beach one morning and he sees a guy dance, looks like dancing in the distance. And when he gets closer, he realizes he's not dancing at all. He's actually throwing something into the water. And the closer he gets, he realizes that there's starfish all over the beach that have been washed up by the tide and the guy's tossing them back in the water. And he says to him, why are you doing that? He says, well, if the starfish stay out in the sunshine, they'll die. So I'm tossing them back in the water to save them. And he looks up and down the beach, Isley looks up and down the beach, he sees these thousands of starfish, and he says, there's so many of them, you can't think it will make a difference. The guy reaches down and says, made a difference to that one. You see, every conversation we have that bridges the barrier, every conversation with that cousin, uncle, mother, sister, father, friend, that gets back and connected with our humanity makes a difference. And what I want to leave you with this morning is let's get out there and start throwing some of those starfish.